guys, this is your new host, Dee Charnette, and welcome to the new and improved YC Weekly. Our winter break is sadly at an end, and soon we'll be back to the regular routine. Learning, work, and stress. There are a few pit stops on this highway, though, as we still have one holiday this month to celebrate. And no, it's not swearing in our new president, as grand as that may be. I'm talking about MLK Day. Coming up this Monday, Martin Luther King Day is the only holiday we get this month after winter break. Aside from all the snow days, we'll hopefully be getting. I'm sure the man needs no introduction. We all know what he did and how big of an impact he had on shaping America to be what it is today. So instead of regurgitating the history of what happened, which you can find anywhere else, today I'll be focusing on things you might not know about Martin Luther King. One of the first things you might think of when you think Martin Luther King is his I Have a Dream speech, known by pretty much everybody and used incorrectly when people are having a political debate on social media. This speech is famous for Dr. King's hopeful message of equality, no matter their origins. Less well known is the fact that there almost wasn't a dream. Dr. King originally never planned to talk to his audience about a dream, and it wasn't even planned by his writer, Clarence Jones. Instead of the idea came from a gospel singer, Mahalia Jackson, a good friend of Dr. King who suggested midway through the speech that he talk about the dream he had. His dream, along with most of the later half of the speech, was improvised as opposed to reading off the script for the first half. Just goes to show, you can't rely on writers. Another fact you may not be aware of is that Dr. King won a Grammy. On the first ever live Grammy Awards in 1971, he won the award for the best spoken word recording. The piece that won the award for him was Why I Opposed the Vietnam War. No guesses for what that speech is about. His I Have a Dream speech was nominated two years prior, but it didn't win. Who's it out to Rod McCoon? Whoever that is. My last fact to share is one decidedly less happy. Ten years before his untimely death in 1968, he was stabbed with a letter opener when inside a department store. The culprit, Isolia Curry, walked up to him talking about how she was looking for him for five years before plunging the letter opener into his chest. It took hours to remove it from inside Dr. King, and doctors later said that it could have been fatal if he even so much as sneezed. As you might expect from Dr. King, he was quick to forgive his would-be assassin, who was later diagnosed with schizophrenia. He was probably thinking more about how lucky it was he didn't sneeze than how unlucky it was for his life to be targeted in the first place. Well, those are all the facts that I know. Let me know in the comments if you have any interesting facts of your own about Martin Luther King Jr. Remember to like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and hopefully this year will be a good one. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, the measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort, but in times of challenge. So try your best, no matter what you're currently facing. See you next week.